Hi, this video is about chemistry in a nutshell. I am basically going to teach you everything you need to know about chemistry so that you can learn biology. And you may be wondering, why do I need to know chemistry to be able to learn biology? These are two different subjects, aren't they? Well, they are technically two different subjects, but the two go hand in hand. Science is not done in a vacuum. It's not like biology is separate from chemistry, is separate from physics. All of it works together. Science is science, okay? So in order to be able to understand biology, you have to have some degree of understanding of chemistry. So I'm gonna tell you the basics of what you need to know in order for chemistry in order to be able to do biology. So let's get started with that. Okay, so this is the periodic table of elements. You've probably seen this before at some point in your life. You may not know how to read it. You may not know what all these symbols mean. You may not know why some things are different colors than others or why they are where they are. That's okay. You don't have to know all that right away. I don't know why I had my mask on and got used to it. <laughs> you don't have to know all that right away. Uh, so what you need to know, all you need to know is that this is a list. It is a list of 118 different elements. What this means is that there are 118 different kinds of atoms that make up everything in the universe. And remember that an atom is the smallest building block of matter. What's matter? Anything. Anything is matter. If it exists, it's matter. Okay? And atoms are the smallest building blocks of matter. Now, atoms aren't the smallest things in the universe, but they are the smallest things that you can build something with, okay? Once you get smaller than an atom, you cannot build things in the universe, so far as we know, unless you get into some complicated quantum stuff, which we're not gonna go there. This is for high school biology. No comments from nerds about how technically you can with all this string theory stuff. Don't want to hear it. High school biology, okay? Basics. Here's what you need to know. Atoms are the building blocks. Any, anything smaller than an atom, and you can't build anything with. So if you take anything and you break it down into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces, you will eventually get to the smallest piece you can get to that you can still build something with, and that's the atom. This table is a list of those 118 different kinds of atoms that exist in the universe, okay? Now, atoms are made up of three things. There are three things that make up an atom. There are protons, neutrons, and electrons. These are three tiny particles that make up every atom in the entire known universe. How exactly do they make up an atom? Well, an atom consists of two parts. There is a thing in the middle that looks kind of like a cluster of grapes. And that thing is called the nucleus. In the nucleus, the center of the atom are these two things, protons and neutrons. Around the nucleus of the atom, you have these other guys called electrons. 
that orbit around the nucleus like the Earth orbits around the Sun. Now, these things have electrical charges. Protons have a positive charge. Just like on a battery, there's a positive end and a negative end. Atoms are similar. Protons are positive, electrons have a negative charge, and neutrons have a zero charge, or neutral. So in the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. So some of these grapes will be positive protons, and the other grapes will be neutral neutrons. And around the nucleus will be several, let me actually be consistent. Let me only have three electrons, okay? So around the nucleus, you have electrons. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the periodic table real quick. Remember how many uh, protons this atom has in the nucleus? One, two, three. The only difference between one atom, one type of atom, and another type of atom is how many of these are in the nucleus, how many protons there are, okay? If I take a proton away, it's a completely different atom. If I add a proton to it, it's a completely different atom. So how do you know what atom this is? Well, remember, there's one, two, three protons in the nucleus. So when I go back to my periodic table, on the periodic table, you will notice that there are these numbers above each of these symbols. Each of these is an element, a different kind of atom. And remember what makes one atom different from the, another atom is how many protons are in the nucleus. The atom we just drew on the other page had three. It's in numerical order from left to right. One, Two, start back at the left side, three. What we drew on the other slide was a lithium atom, Li, okay? Now, if I add one protein, one proton to the nucleus, I now have four protons, and it's not lithium anymore, it's now beryllium with four protons in the nucleus. If I took one away from lithium, which has three, if I took one away, I'd have two. And then I would have created a helium atom. Now, atoms don't really lose protons or gain protons in nature. That's not something that happens, well, once again, there's going to be some nerds that say, well, yes, it does. In the core of the sun and places like that, yes, it does. But just in everyday life here on earth, your experience as a human here on this planet, atoms aren't just floating around in our planet in the air, losing and gaining protons, okay? That's not something that happens naturally here on earth. But what does happen naturally all the time is gaining and losing electrons. So atoms gain and lose electrons willy-nilly all day long, okay? So let's say First of all, what am I talking about? I have to go back and explain something, okay? So remember, nucleus in the center. Let's say there's three pluses. Atoms need a certain number of electrons in order to be happy. 
okay? Let's just say that for whatever reason, this particular atom needs four electrons to be happy. Now I know there's gonna be some nerds that say, that's not how many lithium needs to be happy. That's not the point. Here's the point. The point is that different atoms need different numbers of electrons in order to be happy. If they have too many, they're not happy. If they have too little, they're not happy. So let's say this guy wants four. Three, he won't be happy with. Nope. Five, he won't be happy with. Nope. He needs an exact number of electrons. So if we're missing one, let's say he needs four and he only has three, he will go out in search for another one. Okay. Now, he won't just start taking them from atoms, but let's say that there's another atom floating around. Let's call this atom two. Let's say atom two over here has one extra electron that it needs. Let's say it needs five, but it has six for whatever reason, okay? If this atom has an extra electron and this atom needs one more, the two can kind of make a deal like, hey, I'm, I'm one short, you have one extra, let's help each other out. So this atom will share one of its electrons with this atom, but once you share an electron with another atom, you are now bonded. So let's call this uh, atom one and atom two. So we now no longer have two separate atoms. We have two atoms bonded together because they share electrons with each other. So now we have one big, well it's not that big, but it's one big molecule. Okay? A molecule is just two or more atoms that are bonded together because they're sharing electrons. So, you can actually have more than just two atoms. You can have three, four, you can have a hundred atoms in a molecule. And just because they're bonded does not mean that they're stuck together forever. Atom one and atom two are bonded for the moment, but this bond can be broken. Atoms can break their bonds with different atoms and make new bonds with new atoms. Let's say this is atom three. One can break his bond with two and then make a bond with atom three. And now we have an entirely new molecule made out of atoms one and three instead of atoms one and two. And two is off floating by himself again. And this process of breaking old bonds between atoms and then making new bonds with other atoms to make new molecules, that's all chemistry is. That's all chemistry is. Breaking bonds with these molecules taking their atoms, putting them back together with different atoms in a different order to make an entirely new molecule. It's like if you're building with Lego bricks and you have this thing built out of Legos, you can destroy that thing into its individual bricks or atoms and then put those same bricks back together in a different order to make something completely different. 
everything on this planet, every living thing, every living thing on planet Earth, how many different kinds of atoms do you think it takes to make every living thing on planet Earth? You might think it's a bunch, but we only need four different types of elements to make everything on Earth, or four different kinds of atoms, same thing, to make everything on Earth. It's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Those are the only four different kinds of atoms that exist in your body. Once again, nerds don't rip me. I know technically when you eat food, you have stuff like iron and calcium and other stuff in your bones. But when we're talking about biomolecules, the stuff that your body is made out of, it's these four. C-H-O-N, or CHON, is an easy way to remember it. Okay. In every molecule, there's only four different kinds of molecules that exist in your body. And those four different kinds of molecules are all made up of CHON. What are those four different kinds of molecules? They're what we call the biomolecules, or the molecules of life, and those four are carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Those are the four different kinds of molecules that exist in your body that make up everything that is you. And those four different kinds of molecules are only made up of these four different kinds of atoms. So these four atoms are just put together in different arrangements and in different quantities to make up all of these types of molecules and all of these types of molecules work together to make up you. And so that's everything that you need to know about an intro to chemistry and how it relates to biology so that you can, from here moving forward, understand the basic concepts of biology and how your body works.